So Tyson Fury said in his post-fight interview that he set up the knockout by first breaking Dillian White down with jabs and check hooks. When he saw White coming back with hooks to the body, he saw the opening for an uppercut up the middle. However, this is a very simplified breakdown of how he set this knockout up. There's a few more steps needed to be able to do exactly what Fury did. So let's take a look at how exactly he set this highlight reel knockout up. So the first point is that it all starts with Tyson Fury's feint game. Fury is a very active fainter and he does it for countless reasons, but the main uses for feints in this fight that we're going to explore are to bait out defensive reactions to expose openings for him to set up his own offense, to bait out counters so that he could counter those counters, and also to control his opponent to keep them defensively minded. I mentioned in my Amir Khan vs Kel Brook video that feints could be used to stop your opponent from walking right through you, as the feints will occupy your opponent and give them something to think about. They'll have to defend themselves, which means for a moment they won't be attacking you. However, you can't just expect to get away with fainting for the sake of fainting. If your opponent doesn't respect the feints, you need to be prepared to punch when your opponent keeps coming, or counter punch if they bite on the feint with a punch. And this is what Tyson Fury does to keep his opponents off of him, unlike Amir Khan. So for the first example of exposing openings to set up his offense, we see Fury gives White a feint here, and White reacts by raising his lead arm and keeping his rear arm low. So Fury's going to see the opening for his right hand, and as we see, he gives White the same feint and then tries to shoot the right hand, but White does a good job of blocking it just in time. So for the next example of using feints to bait out a counter, here you see Fury feint out his jab, and this is going to prompt Dillian White to try to counter it with his own jab, but Fury is able to pull away from it and counter Dillian White's counter. Fury does get touched by the counter, but since it was only a feint, he was able to pull away from it to mitigate the damage. In another example, we see Fury give a very subtle feint, which draws out the counter from White, and Fury is able to dodge the drawn out counter and then come back with a counter shot. So feinting is great for keeping your opponent defensively minded to stop them from freely attacking you, but as I said, you must be ready to punch if they don't respect your feint. So here in this example, we're going to see Tyson Fury feint his right hand, and as we see Dillian White doesn't really respect it, he doesn't really react to it. Because this is very early in the fight, he hasn't been forced to respect Tyson Fury's feints yet, so he doesn't really react much. So Fury sees this and simply finishes his punch to make Dillian White pay for not reacting to it. So now we know how Fury was able to box Dillian White up revolving his offense around his feint game, but now we see White try to adjust by waiting for the attack from Fury and following him back on his punch retraction with a body attack, or just initiating his own attack to the body. So early in the fight we see Tyson Fury is going to attack Dillian White, and then after the attack is going to pull back and use his long guard to try to avoid the counters. You see Fury's long guard is one of his primary defenses. What he does is he puts his long arms in the way of the punching lanes of counters that would possibly come to his head. It also clogs up the empty space so that his opponents can't freely step in or punch while he's pulling back. However, as you can see, his body is open. Fury's extended left arm does multiple things. His glove posts on white to block his vision and act as a shield to control his head or his glove and keep it in place. The left elbow is high and directly in the lane an overhand right must travel through to reach his head. The left shoulder is the last line of defense if the overhand right makes it past his elbow. And Fury's right arm isn't as far extended, but his glove is out preemptively to protect his head against the counter jab. This does leave him open for the counter left hook, but his relying on the distance of pulling back, along with his extended left arm blocking White's entry in to defend himself against the hook. But of course, all of this is mainly defense for his head. Fury's body is left open, since in a traditional guard, his arms and elbows would normally be there to protect his body. You can even see from the right triangle drawn, the bottom line to Fury's body is a straight line, while the hypotenuse is to his head. And as we know, the hypotenuse is the longest line in a right triangle. So not only is Fury's long guard primarily protecting his head here, but the distance to his head is further as well. 
but White doesn't see the opening and as you can see is really hunting for the headshot here. And then as he chases Fury down, Fury reads the left hook as he has switched his left glove to control White's left shoulder to add resistance to that left hook. His right arm has now fully transitioned to hook defense and his left shoulder is now raised up to protect his chin in case the overhand right comes. Even though Fury is no longer leaning back, his head is still further than his body since Fury is taller than White, his head is still the hypotenuse of the triangle, and White's left hook is completely shut down by Fury's proactive long guard. Comparatively, we see Dillian White make the adjustment later in the fight, where he goes under the guard to the body as soon as Tyson Fury puts up the long guard. If we watch it again, we see Fury backs up with the long guard and White goes under it. And once again, we're going to see here, as soon as Fury extends the long guard, Dillian White goes under with the hook. And this opening to the body against the long guard is something Deontay Wilder attacked in the third fight. The thing is the long guard often baits headshots because you see the hands leave the head wide open. However, the hands and arms are now both protecting the head in the form of blocking the lanes punches must travel to even reach the head. Fighters will often use this at long range or while pulling back so they could use distance as defense as well. If anything, the head is more protected from the long guard than if the hands were up in the high guard. But this added defense to the head is at the cost of protection to the body, since the arms are occupied, blocking punch lanes to the head only. The fighter using the long guard would have to take a big risk and drop the hands to parry a body shot, which leaves their head open. Try to remember this risk reward when using or fighting someone using the long guard. However, Fury picks up on the fact that White is trying to counter him with body shots as is pulling away with the long guard. So Fury then steps out of range of the body shots and this is where he notices the opening for the uppercut. So one last time we're going to see Dillian White wait for Fury to attack him so that he could step in with a counter to the body as Fury is pulling away. But just a few seconds later we're going to see Tyson Fury make the final adjustment. He's going to shoot a touch jab and take a half step back to make Dillian White think he's pulling away so that he could bait him into stepping in with the same counter body shot he's been throwing over and over again. And White takes the bait and walks right into an uppercut that tucks him into bed in front of 94,000 people. Walk me through how you set up that uppercut. You know, we was touching him with a jab, breaking him up with a jab and the check hook. I wanted him to keep going downstairs with them hooks to the body. And at the right time, I was going to bring the right uppercut straight through the middle. But interestingly enough, this is Dillian White's third career loss, and all three of his losses are knockouts via uppercut. I wonder if Fury knew that, and this was his game plan to set up that uppercut from the beginning, or if it really was just a mid-fight adjustment. But that's going to do it for me. Thank you all for watching, and special thanks to my GOAT tier patrons for supporting the channel. Jason Mahinen, Grant Gabriel, Albert Chen, Jeff, Dmitry Drozdov, Andre, and Gostolai Geza. You guys keep the channel going. And I'll see you guys all in the next one. Thank you all for watching.